Hi everybody, this is the first video of a series of videos in which I'm going to be exploring four data sources for your Power Apps applications. SQL Server, Dataverse, Dataverse for Teams and SharePoint Online. We will be exploring different features and characteristics of each data source so you will be able to determine which data source to use in which particular scenario. In this first video, we are going to explore an uh, application that I have built using SQL as, a, as the data source as well as a replica of, of that application but using Dataverse. We will focus mainly on delegation. Delegation is basically the, the capability to delegate functions or operations to the backend instead of processing those queries in the front end that will give you a better performance on your application so let's get started okay so let's start with the demo what we have here is a Power Apps Canvas app application that I have built. It has six screens and the data source uh, for this Power Apps application is a SQL database. Let me preview this application and use Canvas size. So it's important to understand that in this particular example, I'm using a SQL database that is installed in my PC and I am using a data gateway to connect to that SQL database, like simulating a connection to a SQL on-premise database. However, the functionality that you're going to see here is the same if you use SQL Azure. So in the home screen, what you will see is that we have a table. All of these are records stored in a particular table in my SQL database. In an upcoming video, I'm going to show you how did I build this application. Basically, what is the structure of the databases, the relationship between the tables and the different views that I have to create. But in par this particular example, we will see that we have this SQL table with various fields and we have different filters. For example, we have filter by category, by language, modality. A professor and, and level as well and we can also filter by is open or include certificate so let's apply some, some filters so you can see basically the how it is working I can filter let's say by collaboration and productivity and you will see that we have basically three three courses here right but I can also at the same time filter by language let's say I want to see the ones that I have that are uh, in English let me now use other filters for example let's say I want to see uh, uh, all the courses are, are online and we have three courses and here we can select the level as well and level intermediate for example and at the same time I can apply another filter for example well in this case I can also filter by category again let's say software development so you will see that we can apply all of those filters at the same time so in an easy way we can get the values that we need for example the same for professor okay also, we have another interesting functionality. I can filter by course name and this doesn't need to be the exact name. So, for example, I can filter by C, by let's say C++ uh, or C Sharp because I'm interested on a C Sharp course. But I can also filter by the, all the courses that have the word power, right? So we get, for example, a Power BI course or let's say uh, for example, I am interested on a, a, a course related to business intelligence and um, basically is getting the values, right? So something interesting to take in consideration here. All of these filters are delegated to the SQL Azure database. What that means is that all the processing, all the queries are happening in the back end, are not happening in the front end. So that's great because this is perfect for a performance perspective. Another interesting thing that you will see here is that we also are using some functions. We will review that uh, later. Uh, how does it work? this works in the back end? But in this particular case, I'm using different functions. For example, if I would like to see the most expensive course based on the unit price, I can use the max function and I'm getting the value, right? This is a delegable function as well. All of those are delegable functions. For example, to get the, the cheaper price or the average price, I can, I can use the average function. Or for example, I can sum the number of uh, available seats 
in total for all the courses. So th those are just examples of functions that we can use and uh, that are delegable. Now let's go to the nu numeric example. In this case, we are gonna use other types of fields. So I can use, let's say, I wanna see, this is gonna be based on the total number of hours. So I wanna filter by all the courses that has a 20 hours in total duration or is not 20 hours I can use also is less than or equal to 20 right you can see that there or is graded greater than or equal to 20 so all of those expressions are working correctly are delegable so all of those queries are happening in the backend as well Let's see another interesting example using other functions or other filters. For example, I want to filter in this case by course name. So I can use all of these options. Let's say if I use is, the name needs to be exactly the same as we put in here, right? So for example, if I put C sharp training, it's going to filter, it's going to work. However, if I don't want to use that and I want to use contains, we can say if it contains 365, yeah, I get the values as well. I can use the opposite, does not contain full and it's going to work as well. Or I can use a star with. So let's see if I want to see a course that starts with, let's say, Scrum. Or I can also use ends with as a, as a function or as an option, right? Let's, let's see another example, ends with course or methodology, right? Methodology. Yeah, it's filtering and it's going to get, sorry, I need to select ends with and it's going to get scrum methodology. So it's working. And also we can use is empty, right? If the, obviously if we have some records with the course name empty it's going to show those records but it's not we can we can use also it's not empty and it's going to work so all of these different types of text filters can be applied uh, um actually uh, are gonna be delegable to the to the sql azure or sql server database another interesting function is the search function, right? We can search by a uh, keyword that exists between the course name or the description. So let's say I want to look at training. This is going to search values between the name, the course name or the description. Now let's see another example. In this case, we are going to use a date field. In this example, what we're going to do is we are going to filter based on the start date of the course and we are going to use a range. So for example, let's say every course that has started between March 1st and for example, April 1st. And we see the values here, right? If we look at the, the start date, yeah, all of them are in, are in March. Let's say, for example, we want to just filter the one that started during the March 15, for example, and it's, and it's filtering, it's working, right? So that's another type of filter that we can apply based on, on dates. And the final example is going to be based on operators, right? So in this case, I can use other operators in the filters, right? So for example, what we did is uh, we get the, we are, we are going to filter by the potential deal size, but we don't have this value here as a field or a calculated field. Basically, the potential deal size of a course, it's gonna depend on the unit price as well as the number of, of seats, right? So the multiplication of those two values is gonna get, uh, is gonna get the, basically the potential deal size, right? And that's the operator I'm using to, to apply that filter. So for example, let's say if the potential deal, deal size is less than less than or equal to 10,000 or let's say is more than or equal to 10,000 right and this and basically it's gonna get the calculation or based on on the unit price and the number of, of seats and it's gonna apply those filters. Now let's compare this with a Dataverse database, right? So I have built an application that have basically exactly the same functionality. Let me quickly show you this. 
So this is my Power Apps application again. It's using exactly the same filters. And just to let you know, here, for example, I have all my Dataverse tables and I have created some relationships. Something interesting in the case of a Dataverse is that it's easier to build a database. For example, I just need to create a tables, just need to configure the relationship and I immediately is going to have a view with the lookup values of those relationships. Actually, what you see here in this particular table is based on a view that has been automatically created based on the table that I that I created and in, in Dataverse, right? In the case of SQL Azure, for example, you need to create a, the SQL views to interact with them. So one of the advantages of Dataverse is that it's easier and you spend less time creating this, the structure and, and the database. But in terms of delegation, you will see that it's going to be very similar. In this case, we can apply the same filters. Let's see, for example, let's filter also by a label. For example, I want to see intermediate label and as well as modality. So all of those filters are going to work without any problem. It's going to be the same experience. If I want to filter by course name, it's going to be exactly the same. For example, apps. If we go to numeric filters, and sorry, just to just to come back here, you will see that the max, mean, average, and some functions also all are delegable to Dataverse. So all of these functionalities in the home screen are going to be the same as in SQL Azure and are going to work it's, it's sadly without any limitation. All of those are delegable functions. If we look at, let's say, numeric, it's exactly the same. Okay, so let me filter by uh, total, num total hours are 20, it's not 20 is less than or equal to or is greater than or equal to so by course name and applying all of these filters are gonna work also we can even use a start with if we look at search also it's gonna work just to give you an example i am gonna filter by agile right that it's a text that exists in the course name but if i filter by training it's also going to filter based on the description field Perfect. Now, there is a difference in the case of date, the date filter. The date filter is also going to work, but just let me select a, uh, a different range. So the date filter is going to work as equal as in SQL, in the SQL database. However, the difference is that we don't need to create this uh, workaround as, as specified in the documentation, because if we look at uh, the Dataverse filters, date time is a field that is available uh, is legable to, to Dataverse. So basically, it's going to be easier to create this filter, right? So important to, to understand, we are going to get the same experience. We are going to get the same functionality. In the case of Dataverse, probably some cases or some examples are going to be easier and we will need to spend more time on, on that. However, there is a particular functionality that is not delegable in the case of Dataverse, which is the case of the operator. So what happens here? And actually, let me, let me show you that when you have a delegation warning, you will see basically this uh, particular icon, right? And if we look at the function, uh, again, I'm going to... I'm going to review in an upcoming videos how did I create this, this application, right? But I want, I want you to understand this concept here. So you will see that there is a delegation e warning here, right? And this is because we are using this expression. We are multiplying unit price with seats, right? And this is an expression that is not delegable. But what's going to happen is that in case, for example, that our database table has more than 500 items, we are going to have issues because basically all the processing is going to happen in the front end and by default if we look at this uh, uh, this application and if we go to the advanced settings you will see that all functions that cannot be delegated or are going to be processed in in the front end but are going to support only up to 500 items we can change this to 2000 items right but at the end, we will have limitations. So let's say if we have a database with, uh, in Dataverse that have more than 2,000 items, we won't be able to execute the same filters or get the old information that we need. And also, when we process the operations or, or the functions or calculations in the front end, obviously the performance is not, not going to be the best. Okay, that was all for today's video. I hope this video was informative for you. 
In the next video, we are going to explore two additional data sources, Dataverse for Teams and SharePoint Online. So please don't forget to subscribe and comment on the videos. Thank you.